Hey, it's Mako. Welcome back to my channel. Now, sometimes regardless whether you're just starting out on your art journey or if you've been creating art for quite some time and now you want to turn your hobby into a career, different thoughts can creep into your head. You might start comparing yourself to different artists, their skills, their success, their following. Negative comments from other people might start to get into your head. You start questioning yourself and what you're doing with your life that you slowly start to lose confidence in you and your art because you feel like you have to have a big following. You need to have a cohesive Instagram like everyone else and you start feeling insecure to even call yourself an artist. And I wanted to tell you that you're not alone in this. We've all been there. It's just important to figure out the best way for you to deal with all this negative noise. I'm all about surrounding yourself with people you can learn from and get inspired by, but sometimes it can be difficult to find someone in your local area. But luckily we all have access to the internet and we can choose who we want to follow, who we want to learn from and what vibes you want to be surrounded by to become a better version of ourselves. And one of the resources I always go back to whenever I need guidance or if I want to improve on something is Skillshare. And that's why I'm super happy that they wanted to partner with me again to support this channel and also my message. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it's basically an online learning community for creatives with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, lifestyle and so much more. I create a whole playlist for everyone who wants to gain confidence and get better in their art and possibly turn it into a career. I'm always talking about how important it is to widen your horizon and to get out your little bubble to really see what's possible so you can realize that if they can do this, I can do this too. So if you want to try it out yourself and get full access to all the premium content, check out the link in the description box down below that will give you two months for free. Now another great and easy way to figure out what to do and how to deal with something is by simply reaching out to people and ask and that's what I did. I reached out to some of my artist friends and asked if they could share their wisdom on how they deal with self-doubt, negativity and how they found not only confidence in their art but also in themselves. I wanted to show you all the different perspectives and ideas so you can use all these tips in your own life. Do you compare yourself to other artists? I think as an artist, it's actually a pretty common thing to want to compare yourself to other artists. And you can either take that in a negative or a positive way. If I am comparing myself, I generally try to do it in a positive way. I find when I do compare myself, it's more like a motivation for me to try to not replicate or mimic, but try to learn from their pieces of work. For example, if I see an artist that I really like and admire, I sort of study their work a little bit and I try to pull out what I like about that piece. There are some artists that I truly admire for their ability to capture light perfectly and show that so perfectly. And I think when comparing myself to them, I do it in a more positive way because I would love to be able to reach that level of knowledge, I guess, about that certain topic. I would say that seven years into my art career now, I don't do it as often as I did in the early days, just because you're still figuring out, you're trying to find inspiration and just kind of whatever sticks, you know, in terms of what you like and what type of styles of painting or drawing or sketching or whatever it might be. So these days it's more about cultivating community. When I'm on social media, I'm making sure that I'm following people that I'm only inspired by in a really wholesome way and not in a way of, oh, I wanna copy them or whatever. So for bits of inspiration or people that I love to follow that are just talented in different areas than I am, in that sense, I compare myself to them in ways just to, because I'm a competitive person and I need that extra edge to kind of push me forward. But it's not at all what it was in the early days of comparison and that trap of like feeling like I want to do what they do or I wish I was, you know, being that far along in my business or whatever it might be. I think it just takes a lot of mindfulness and self-control and staying in your lane and focusing on what you do best. I don't know if I compare my artwork to other artists because I feel like each artist has their own journey and their own 
paintings and part of the process of finding your style I think is the fun part but I definitely compare my success to other artists and how much art they're selling or how many views they get on YouTube and all that sort of thing I think that's very natural I think when you're comparing yourself and you're in that headspace of negativity it's really good to take yourself out maybe focus on something a little bit different and then when you're not feeling that anxious spiraling, you can think of it more objectively. I think it's really good to remember that social media is snippets of someone's life. They're like the highlights reel. You don't see all the failures, you don't see all the paintings that they've thrown in the bin or that they've ripped up or that they've scribbled all over because they hate them. They're showing the best of what they can do. What do you do when your art doesn't turn out the way you imagined it? Throw it in the trash and move on. Every talented, amazing professional artist has pieces that end up in the trash can. And a lot of the times it's every day I'm throwing something away that I don't like. And you just can't get bothered by it. It can be frustrating, especially in the early days when you're so new to something, you have to be really, really gracious and kind to the way you talk to yourself in your practice because you're not gonna be an all-star artist the first time you pick, pick up paintbrushes or the first few times or whatever it might be. And it's just like anything else out there, you're not gonna be Mozart if you've never played piano before and the first time you sit down or first few times or whatever, just be able to whip out all these classical pieces. So it takes technique and training and practice and dedication and you just got to remind yourself of that so keeping people around you that are really encouraging and um, support you in whatever it is you're doing whether it's a hobby or you want to pursue it as a career having that support group around you is really really crucial when your art doesn't turn out exactly how you wanted it to and it doesn't quite meet your expectations i think it's important to remember for your next painting not to have those high expectations of the outcome. For me, what really just opened up my art practice and made me feel so much freer is to focus on the process, focus on what painting gives me, what does it fulfill in me, and that way I think you end up with a better painting and that whole pressure of creating an amazing artwork just feels so much lighter and lifted. You will have some good days and some bad days. When you are having a bad day, or personally when I'm having a bad day and I feel like everything that I try to paint or draw just isn't turning out properly, it is so easy to sort of go into that negative space and think that you can't do something. So if it's not turning out the way that you want it to or that you had hoped, perhaps there's something that you need to work on or maybe there's some way that you can kind of like level up your talent so that you can feel more positive and happy about what you're producing. You can also think of painting as baking. For example, you bake a cake, you follow all the steps, you measure all the ingredients correctly, but after baking, it the cake turned out to be too sweet. So what do you do? You can lessen the sugar so that next time, the cake isn't that sweet anymore. So when it comes to painting, when you don't like the outcome of your painting, you can try to practice again, paint the same painting, but this time try to change something. You could change the color, you can change the placement of the flowers. How do you deal with criticism? I think it's really good to see criticism as a really positive thing. Yes, there are online trolls or people who are just negative in general, and it is better to form a protective bubble around yourself to those people. But criticism is what makes us improve. It's what makes us try harder, whether that's our own critique, somebody else's, and try not to view criticism in such a negative way. Everybody receives criticism, even the most amazing artists. They are there because of criticism they may have received in the past. So try and notice the difference between people that are really trying to help and people that are just being negative. Being in the art field, I think criticism is something that comes along with that. And especially if you've been to an art school, criticism kind of comes with the whole package. You are constantly critiquing other people's work. You're constantly asking your peers for advice and tips and just seeing how they feel about your work. When I get criticisms, I love it when it's a constructive criticism 
because I really like to see how other people see my artwork from their own eyes because sometimes it's nice to have another set of eyes on your work. And usually after I complete a piece, I do show my friends, my family, and I just kind of ask their opinion because I do want to make sure that I'm not just seeing it through my own eyes. Another thing that I like to do to kind of critique my own work is to go in with my phone or a camera and just take a photo as I'm working on it. And sometimes just to see that through another lens will give you a whole new perspective. So I think that criticism is actually a really good thing. As long as it's not like a hateful comment, those are not constructive. They're just meant to be mean. I definitely have received criticism and hate online, specifically Instagram, and I have books out there. And so there's reviews on Amazon from people who just, you can't please everyone. If you're running an art business or you're just doing it as a hobby, you're not gonna please everyone. It's subjective and it's really hard to hear things, but you just have to chalk it up to, well, I just don't please that type of person. And find the people that you do please or that do like your work. Take criticism with a grain of salt because it could have some insight into whatever it is you're doing. Maybe it's your process or your client experience or maybe it's your actual artwork. But I think for the most part, anybody who's being discouraging about you pursuing art or discouraging your efforts in art, we all have that. And if, you know, people like myself or Mako or famous artists like Van Gogh were to listen to the criticism in the early days when they were just discovering their talents or developing your, their skills, we wouldn't have amazing artists in museums today filled with incredible, incredible artwork. So you just gotta remember that we all start out as beginners and there's gonna be that criticism. And the biggest critic is always yourself. And so make sure you're, you're taking breaks to remind yourself that you're just doing the work and progress over perfection wins the race. I do remember a few years ago when my art was featured by this art sharing page. I do remember that there was a comment below saying why was my art featured it wasn't even good enough to be shared in that famous page. Of course, I felt hurt at first, but then I thought to myself, I wasn't making art to please everybody. It wasn't my goal. I was painting just because it made me happy, it was relaxing, and it was my creative output, and I didn't need the validation from anybody. My advice is if you see one negative comment, don't reply at all. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy. And also, one comment doesn't define you as a person. It doesn't define your art. And just continue doing what you love. Continue making art and continue painting. And don't mind the people who just wants to put out negative thoughts. That is just one person. You have 10 other friends who love and support you. You have hundreds of people maybe silently viewing your art but they are very inspired by what you are doing so don't quit don't stop just continue doing art do something that you love have you ever been afraid of wasting your art supplies i am not an artist who likes to go out and try tons and tons of new supplies when i find a supply that i like i usually stick with it when i purchase things i usually get the colors that i know i will need i do a lot of my own color mixing as to not like overspend and overuse products that I don't necessarily need. I don't like to use my good supplies or my more expensive supplies when I'm simply just trying things out. If I'm doing like a draft of something, I'll always go for my cheap supplies. So that's kind of how I deal with it. I have like my cheap kind of testing supplies and things that I know are just gonna be used for drafts and quick sketches and stuff like that. And then I have my more expensive supplies that are just for final pieces. Oh, totally. In the beginning, I really used to just take a tiny little bit of paint and it really hindered me. The biggest piece of advice I would say is to buy art supplies that you feel like you can waste. Not that you wanna waste them, because that is a waste, but you want to feel free to be able to use whatever color you want and how much you need to. I am very much not a wasteful person. Like I know that you release pig pigment in your water cup and this is talking specifically about watercolor obviously. As long as it's going towards 
me progressing as an artist, I'm not upset about it. It's not a waste, even if it's a piece that ends up in the trash or you're disappointed with it or whatever. It's still not a waste because you're putting in the hours toward perfecting your craft. So if you know you hate the piece, still remind yourself that you showed up and you painted today or you showed up and you drew today or whatever it is that you're doing because that is just moving you further along in your journey towards your goals and that might be to become a professional artist or whatever. So just keep reminding yourself that whether the piece ends up crumpled up in the trash can or not or whether you put it up on your shelf or you frame it, uh, it's still steps in progress and towards your goals. For me specifically, it was the paper. I was afraid of using 100% cotton paper before because it's expensive and I don't want to ruin my painting. But then I overcame that fear because I realized that if I don't use this paper, I will never learn. I also won't be making mistakes if I don't use this paper, which means that I will never learn. One more tip is that when it comes to paper, you can buy like a large sheet of 100% cotton paper and cut it into smaller sheets so that when you start practicing, you won't feel as guilty and you won't feel as overwhelmed compared to painting like a huge 9x12 paper. How did you find confidence in your art? I think I'm still working on that. I don't know if any artist ever feels completely confident in their work, but it's something that I think comes with time. And it's not necessarily having confidence in the art, I think it's having confidence in yourself and being able to show that vulnerability to yourself with the world. I think it's an ongoing journey to try to find confidence in my own art. I'm constantly thinking that my style hasn't fully developed yet and I'm constantly searching for that style to kind of come through. So while I am confident in what I create, I feel like I'm not yet at a level where I am 100% confident that I have like a unique style. I became more confident um, doing art when I started practicing more. I painted a lot and I noticed that there was a big um, improvement because of that I realized that my brush strokes were now more confident and that I wasn't afraid to paint certain strokes anymore another thing that made me more confident was being surrounded by good people who encourage me and who supports me I think the art community on Instagram also played a big part in my art journey I love that everybody's just so nice and Everybody just lifts each other up. I think this also comes back to the people around you having a support group. My husband was really encouraging in the early days for me to post my work online. It felt really icky and awkward to me seven, eight years ago when I first started posting my artwork on Instagram because nobody was really taking Instagram and using it as a business tool yet or as a way to show their side hub, hobby or hustle. But to overcome that lack of confidence in the early days, I had people around me like my parents and my husband John who encouraged me and kept reminding me that I was good at this even though I actually really sucked in the early days. And I that kept me going and kept me pursuing this thing that I became obsessed with, which was watercolor and calligraphy. If you don't have people around you that are supporting you and encouraging you and even if your work sucks um, then you need to switch it up and get some new friends or show your work online and build a community of like-minded encouraging artists online like through a hashtag or through your profile on Instagram just commenting on people who are in similar stages to you and encouraging them and they'll reciprocate that eventually and then the more you practice the more your muscle memory develops and you would just you know, whether you're painting leaves or you don't know in the beginning stages of practicing whatever type of medium it is, you don't know where to place color or how to mix up certain colors or how to shade things or whatever it might be, but that just develops over time. And I've said this a million times, but you just, it's all about progress. And so even if you put color somewhere and you don't like it, it's still showing you that, oh, next time I'm not gonna do something like that. So the next time you just get better and better. And so developing that muscle memory really, really helps you in terms of gaining more confidence with putting paint on paper, how to just look more confident with your strokes and everything. And so it really is all about practice and developing that muscle memory. When did you start calling yourself an artist? This is the best question ever. 
um, because I totally remember going through that really difficult period of whether to put artist or not on, on my Instagram bio. And that sounds so silly, but I totally remember that feeling of, is it embarrassing to call myself an artist? Like, is it vain? Like, does, cause other people would say it, but it feels like different to say it yourself. But now looking back, in my opinion, it's nothing to do with how much you sell or make mon whether you even make money off your artwork. I think being called an artist is so subjective that there isn't a rule. I think there's almost two sides to being an artist. I think there's the skill level of whatever that is, painting, sculpture, and how skilled you are at it. Um, from an academic point of view and then I think there's the other element and that's that it makes people feel something. To me the feeling of art is a lot more important. If you create something that could move somebody in a certain way then I think that's art and I think you could call yourself an artist. So I think I started calling myself an artist when I started doing it full time and I kind of ditched all my other little side gigs. I used to do graphic design and web design and stuff like that and I would call myself like a web designer. But when I started doing art full time and it became my daily gig, I guess, that's I think when I started calling myself an artist simply because when people ask what you do, it's really hard to explain sometimes if you're like an entrepreneur like I am, it's hard to explain all of the different aspects of your creative business. So I just kind of started calling myself an artist and that works for a whole variety of things. So it's worked. I have been calling myself an artist since basically day one of me selling a piece to someone or selling my art services to somebody, even though I wasn't super confident in my work and I was definitely not a businesswoman or savvy businesswoman at the time. And I'd only been painting with watercolor for about four months when I got my booked my first job and had a paying client. And so I would say about then is when I started calling myself an artist, it felt official. But I feel like a lot of people who feel the severe pressure of imposter syndrome, it just, it's something that doesn't really go away. It's just a voice that softens over time and you with practice are able to ignore better. And so if you're feeling that nagging voice of imposter syndrome, which is like, who are you to call yourself an artist or your work isn't good enough or whatever. You just have to remember that all of us have that voice in our heads. And so it just really takes some practice in softening and quieting that voice and getting better at it, at um, brushing it off over time. And so I don't think there's a, you need to have three years worth of experience and you need to have a degree in fine art or whatever. I don't think there's really any rules out there that say when you can or can't call yourself an artist. It's kind of up to the person who holds that title, really. What is the number one thing you've learned or did that improved your art tremendously? I feel like everybody else is gonna say this, but practice. I really believe that practice makes progress. And I think that that is probably the only way that you can really improve. And I think that studying other artists that you admire, studying photographs, studying different sources of media is a great way to improve your art because you're constantly kind of looking for little things that you can try and that you can improve on. So I guess just being more open to seeing things in a different way. The number one thing I did was focusing on drawing. So I love painting, I love oil painting, and I wasn't really interested in sitting drawing with a pencil. Like that just didn't interest me. I wanted to get in there with the colors and the palettes. But the most beneficial thing to me was taking it right back to buy a few books on how to draw and how to see things differently and just to focus on drawing maybe once a day and really just hone in on those skills. And it was then that I started to see a change in my work to what I had in my head and what I wanted from it. I clearly remember that the biggest turning point in my art journey was when I upgraded my supplies and I got this really good brush that was pointy and it was also soft and it made me paint loose florals better. I realized that I was painting the same strokes but it was a hundred times better with this new brush and if I did not upgrade my brush then maybe I would have 
been frustrated for such a longer period of time maybe I would have quit by then and when it comes to paper I do recommend using 100% cotton paper or you don't have to use it every day but you have to at least experience it because I remember as well um, I was watching this YouTube tutorial and I followed all the strokes but it did not come out as good um, I realized that I was using this uh, student grade paper that's why the rose that I was painting it kind of looks like a blob and not a rose so the art materials do play a big difference when it comes to painting with watercolor obviously time and practicing is huge you can't replace putting in the hours and developing the muscle memory and technique that it takes to get better to develop your skill but next to that right number two is supplies once i started working with high quality good supplies it completely transformed my practice i was enjoying my practice and seeing the colors that i wanted to see but just never really got those results that i wanted to see from like i i was looking at other people online getting these results with these colors or these brushes and not able to replicate that with my own supplies but once I spent a few extra dollars on supplies and started seeing the results that I wanted to with the color and how it worked wet and wet and how the brushes were able to be more flexible and more snappy whatever it was it really got me even more excited and more obsessed with practicing and helped me enjoy that progress and that practice even more so supplies are huge what is the biggest advice you have for someone who wants to improve their art so for me, the biggest advice would be, I know it sounds so cliche, but it really is to practice a lot. You need to practice. Practice. Practice makes progress. So if you want to improve, um, if you want to get better, the only way that you're going to do that is by practice. You hear this all the time, and I get that it's annoying to hear it all the time, but practice does not make perfect because nobody's perfect but practice makes progress and progress gets you on your way to your goals so if you want to be a professional artist or if you want to achieve certain results you have to put in the time i know it can be very frustrating to practice and still see that there's little improvement but just remember that every time you paint something you are one step closer to your goal. You can't expect to sit down at the piano for the first time and play a Beethoven masterpiece. You can't expect to even, you know, play a chord if you don't know anything about the piano. And so same thing goes with any type of art medium, whether it's sketching, watercolor, acrylic, oil, whatever. You have to put in the time and you have to research and really dive deep into the medium and develop that muscle memory because it doesn't matter how much you know about the supplies or how much you know about the medium or the history and what you know old artists used to use watercolor or what acrylic painters this and that if you don't put in the time and you don't have that muscle memory and technique down within your own hand you're not going to be able to show any sort of results or develop that skill I recommend if you are just starting out, look at some reference photos and try to draw what you see. And try to really develop that artistic eye to see things in a different way. So instead of just seeing a single object, see the detail in that object, the colors, how the light shines on that object, the different colors that the light produces. Just simple things like that, really opening your mind to color, light, subjects, everything kind of art related. My biggest piece of advice would be to not expect so much of yourself. We all look on social media or Pinterest at these amazing artists with a whole body of work that looks like it's cohesive and they've got their style. And we sometimes just want to get to that end point and like we want that. But really art is about the journey and the mistakes that you make to get to that point and all the learning that is involved in that process. So my biggest piece of advice would be stop focusing on the end goal of I want to sell this many pieces of art, I want this studio, I want to be able to afford this certain paint and make it about the process and about the learning and about your relationship with art and making sure that you enjoy it as well because if you've got that constant pressure of having to do this and having to do that 
you're not going to enjoy it. And that's the whole point of art, is to have that amazing relationship with it. Kind of blur out everybody else, even the people on social media that you are really inspired by. Just blur them out and just do your own thing. Don't forget to find joy in painting and remember that learning never stops. There are so many ways to learn how to paint. There are um, YouTube videos, online classes, in-person workshops, and just enjoy the art journey that you will go through. Now comment below and let me know what was the key takeaway from this video? What is something that you will immediately implement in your life so you can feel more confident in your art and in yourself? I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you in my next video. Bye.